Okay. Um, one of the main causes, if not the main causes, of why when you lose weight, you regain weight again and again and again over, is that you or your patient might, might be hormone deficient. And um, when you look at all those hormone, those weight loss programs, the big problem with the most of the weight loss programs is that actually patients don't really look much better by losing weight uh, because they are still hormone deficient and they have then loose muscles. Um, uh, flat, uh, so they lose weight where they shouldn't in the face, for example, and then they lose weight. They don't lose weight around the hips or the um, thighs. And the reason why this does not occur is that there are hormone deficiencies. Now, a typical form of obesity is abdominal obesity. Uh, you can have obesity in the face, I would say. You can have obesity on the, the legs. But abdominal obesity uh, is um, um, very typical for aging people. And it's included in what is called the metabolic syndrome metabolic X syndrome or metabolic syndrome. And let's see a bit what this means. First of all, to understand well, abdominal obesity is really on the belly accumulating fat. And most of diseases that are linked with obesity are usually linked with abdominal obesity, especially visceral fat. The more fat you have inside of the abdomen, the more risk of cancer you have, hypertension, heart disease, uh, uh, high cholesterol, and diabetes and other uh, problems. Well, um, having um, the uh, around the hip and uh, the uh, ties of fat that is not linked with um, such uh, a grave risk of disease. <coughs> so you could have two people who have the same weight, and actually one has almost no has no abdominal obesity and no excessive uh, fat inside of the abdomen, excessive visceral fat, and he has um, a very low mortality. So this is typically the CT scan you can have of the abdomen. There is um, less, much less fat. Well, you could have a person with, um, that has the same weight, but is fatty, or is a loose body, and that is much more a big problem because there's a lot of abdominal obesity and vis with visceral fat mass. So we're going to focus on this lecture on the met abdominal obesity and metabolic X syndrome and look what hormone deficiencies there are behind. But let's go back to what is the metabolic syndrome. Um, when you see in scientific studies talking about central obesity, it's actually the same as abdominal obesity. And usually metabolic uh, uh, syndrome X, you have uh, abdominal obesity, higher amounts of triglycerides, um, above the 150 milligrams per deciliter. You have a lower HDL cholesterol, around the lower than 40 milligrams per deciliter, or less than uh, in, in men, and in women, less than 50 milligrams per deciliter. And you have a high blood pressure, um, above the systolic is above 130. So it's not above the 140, it's above the 130, and diastolic pressure is above the 85 millimeters of mercury. So it's not above or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury where we really think that people have high blood pressure. So it's already intimate degree to hypertension. And um, they might also have a treatment of previously diagnosed hypertension. Um, then the blood pressure will be lower with this hypertensive, anti-hypertensive medication. And they have a high fasting plasma glucose above the 100 milligrams per deciliter. Or they might have also previously diagnosed and treated type 2 diabetes. So um, many people have this actually. Also in the audience, although you are probably a better type of, of people as professionals, in the health sector, you probably have better values than the average population. But still, this is um, a, a syndrome that makes you more likely to have disease and that shortens or makes you likely to shorten your life. So uh, you can also, the abdominal obesity itself, how do you measure it? Well, you can measure it by uh, measuring the waist circumference or, and, and that would be even better, the waist and the hip circumference and make a ratio. 
And the waist circumference um, above 102 centimeters, or 40 inches in men, is considered as abdominal obesity, or a waist circumference above the 88 uh, centimeters, or 35 inches in women, is considered abdominal obesity. And then you have a waist to hip ratio that is, um, um, the, the, the waist should always um, um, somewhere be uh, uh, below the hip, and if it is not, if the waist is more than the hip or almost more, then you have abdominal obesity. So a weight to hip ratio of above 0.9 for men or 0.85 for women is considered abdominal obesity. So this waist to hip ratio, very important. This is where you measure the waist at the, the let's say the smallest circumference you can measure on the abdomen and the, the largest you can measure on the hips uh, is then the hip measurement. And so behind abdominal obesity, you can have three types of fat accumulation. One is that's not so dangerous is the subcutaneous fat accumulation. But the visceral or the retroperitoneal uh, fat accumulation, those are really linked to disease and higher mortality. You see also that the presence of abdominal obesity, um, the older you get, the more you have that, and then it plateaus, it is more or, less, or even decreases after age 64, 65 uh, age. And then people even become deficient, probably in even in insulin production. The insulin production is retarded in those people compared to when it should be, and they begin then to lose more fat, even if they don't. Uh, um, uh, have not corrected their food. So you see also that there's this sort of uh, prevalence of abdominal obesity in uh, uh, Brazil is in elderly women even more important than in elderly uh, men. But you see that the high amount, almost all women become abdominal obesity. So usually it's uh, said that it's men who have abdominal obesity. No, the highest um, incidence is actually in elderly women uh, and not in elderly men. Because women are even more deficient in testosterone than men. And this testosterone is one of the hormones that reduces abdominal obesity in men and women. Now, um, so you see here all sorts of weight circumferences the risk of disease if the waist circumference in females is less than 70 centimeters in males is very low, but it's very high once you're above the 110 and 120 uh, centimeters. And um, interesting is that the more abdominal fat you have, so the higher the waist and hip ratio is, the lower the insulin uh, sensitivity, so the more you have insulin resistance. So you see it is what is important here to know, and this is the reason that we have this lecture, actually, is that um, for mortality, it is much, the difference is more important if you increase your muscle mass, then you decrease your fat mass. When you see that the f body mass, the, they're in blue, for example, or in red, when you have higher fat, you increase your mortality slightly. But when you lower your muscle mass, there's a bigger uh, um, risk of mortality. And you see all those people when they age, at a certain moment they really start losing a lot their skin thickness and their muscles. Then you know they're rapidly going to die, not if they accumulate fat. So how to reduce abdominal obesity and metabolic syndromes? Well, among the most important treatments, and the treatments are as important as the diet. I would say the treatments in, in hormones are more important than diet, because many of those treatments will increase the muscle mass and reduce the fat mass. Well, in weight loss program, you lose, weight, you lose fat mass and you lose muscle mass often. So that's the wrong way to do for living longer and healthier. So among the therapies, there's thyroid therapy, there's growth hormone therapy, there's testosterone in, in men, or transdermal estradiol progesterone in, in women that can also make you lose fat, not the oral estradiol, but the transdermal. There's DHA, progesterone, and melatonin that have an instant. And then you should also somewhere reduce the ghrelin and increase leptin 
Ghrelin is an appetite stimulator hormone that we have in our body.